We're going to talk about 2020. We're going to end up today, today talk about 2020, a year of wondering. A year of wondering. And I want to go with Jeremiah chapter 29, verses number 11 and verse number 13. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you, and I will seek, and you will seek me and find me, and when you search me with all your heart, that will mess me up. <laughs> a year of wandering, 2020, a year of wandering. The scripture says, for I leave that verse up for a moment, I'm going to go over a little bit here, for I know that the thoughts, in other words, he says, I know the plans in some versions. I know the plans I have for you yeah. toward the Lord. He says, thoughts of peace and not evil, yeah. thoughts to give you hope in the future. So God's plan is always about our best interest. To give us hope, to give us a future, to give us peace and not harm. That's God's plan. And then it says in Isaiah chapter 55, and I'm going to just share this verse with you. Isaiah 55, verse number 8 and verse number 9. He says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So what God is saying that there's a way that he thinks about doing things. There's a way he does things, and it's not the way that we do them. He says, our thoughts are so far from his thoughts as far as heaven from the earth. Now, if his thoughts for us is good and, and peace and hope and no harm, then we should divert to God's plan and God's ways. But somehow we tend to always want to do it our way and ask God to endorse our plan. I'm not sure if you've been like me. I've, I've had my way and I've wanted God to just show, do it my way, God. Rather than just stopping and asking God, what is your will, and what is your plan, and what is your way, we tend to want God to do it our way. I question, why is that? Because I think that we believe that we can't trust God. That we can't trust God because God will mess everything up for us. Somehow, the decision that we want, the choice we want to make, we know deep down it's not God's choice. It may not be the way God chooses, so we don't want to ask God for his choice. We just want God to approve our choice and our plan. That reflects to me a lack of trust. And, and, and the same thing, I imagine God sees it the same way. We want to do it our way. My mother would say, you're grown now. She would say, you're big-headed or whatever. When we don't want to trust and just want to do it our way. You've had, no doubt, advice be given to you and you received that advice and went and did it your way in, anyway. And found out that mama was right or daddy was right or whoever gave you that right. Your coaches were right. Because we did it our way. And here's what happens. In the second part of that scripture says, Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. So again, God's ways and God's thoughts come through us submitting ourselves to him. And if we're not ready to submit to him, then we're not ready to accept from him, I receive from him what, from what he has. And God knows that. When we really want from him, we don't want him, he knows that. We pray that God will change things, but we don't want God to change us. And ultimately, what's happening with the world is a result of the parts of people that we don't look at the origin, we just want the symptoms to change. We want this to go away. But if the hearts have not changed, we'll just bring about another circumstance equal or worse than the one that we're in. And that's our pattern. We want this to end, but we want to fix what caused it. So if we just got rid of this without fixing the root issue, then we'll create another one. And we'll constantly go through this problem to problem. And that's not God's best. It's also not God's desire for us to be struggling. One of the alternate uh, titles for the message today was 2020. What is God thinking? That was gonna, what is God thinking? Because God has a God has a plan. 
if we understood the thoughts and the mind of God, I think that would help us to see where we are and give us a way of navigating this thing a lot easier. But we're not thinking about what God wants or what's his plan. We're still thinking about ourselves. Remember, God does not read headlines. God writes headlines. Mm -hmm. The headlines gets us into the trouble we are in sometimes. Headlines. Because the numbers that we read, someone has thought about the headlines and copy is written about making a catchy headline, something that attracts attention. Any ad, people that produce ads know that you got to have a catchy headline. You know, buy this uh, uh, zero percent interest, uh, no money down. That's a headline. That attracts attention. You got to go down because it's zero percent interest, no money down. But they double the price. You don't look at that. Uh -huh. uh, if you double the price, I'll give you zero percent interest if I can double the price on you. But most people don't look at the fine. I'm just saying we look at headlines and we're driven by headlines. We don't realize there's, there's fine print. There's other things that supports this that we don't really delve into. I'm one of those people that I look at the headline, then I try to read down and figure out what's... I don't know if you like that. Some people just sign. Accept it. Oh, yeah, I accept it because whatever they're, you know, we, just, we accept it and move on because we want the... we want whatever it's offering us. But the headlines and the fine print are two different issues. The fine print keeps us out of trouble. If we read those things, it will give us details and information that will help us to make a more informed decision. We don't want information sometimes. Information is too cluttering. We just like to roll the dice and just go with it. And we end up in situations and places because we didn't think about it. We didn't delve into it deeply enough. Romans chapter 1, verse number 28, God talks about what happens when people deny him. They reject God's counsel. The Bible says he turns them over to a reprobate mind. In other words, God will just let you go. Okay, do it your way. And we will try it our way, and we'll keep trying it our way, and we ultimately, we hope we, hopefully, before too far, we can find out that our way is not working. Unless you're stubborn, you just want to keep trying to force things to try to work your way. That's, that's a person who has pride. He just says, I want to surrender. I want to keep trying to do things their way harder. I just want to push harder. I want to, I want to pound more. I want to do it longer. I want to, I'm to just keep trying. And you realize, no, it's not working. That's wisdom when you find something really is not working. The first thing we got to do in, in our year of wandering is keep an eternal perspective. Keep an eternal perspective. Because God is watching, God is listening. He's watching and he's listening. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things where? Above, not on things of the earth. He's telling us, set our minds, our thoughts on the higher things not on things of the earth. We're so drawn and captive by what we see and hear. That's our senses. The most deceptive part of our being is our senses. We often are deceived by what we see and what we hear. We've gotten away from what we feel and what, what, what our spirit tells us. We've kind of gotten away from that discernment. We like what we see. We believe what we hear, and we go with that majority. And it's easily we're deceived by that. We said, but our mind should be on things that are above, going beyond what we see, beyond what we hear, those things that are above. When Jesus came to the disciples one time, he asked his disciples, he said, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? In other words, what's being said out there? What's popular opinion? They say, well, some say you're John the Baptist, come back to life. Some say you're Elijah, or one of the prophets, and they've given them all this stuff about what the, what this, what's being said about him. And that's prudent. You know, whenever you're a public figure, you want to find out what the poll is, what the, what's the perception about you. But then Jesus asked them a direct question. I hear what they're saying, but who do you say I am? In other words, are you changing public opinion? Or is public opinion changing you? Are you believing 
what they're saying, are you believing because you know me? Because if we know him, then we should be speaking something different than everybody else is speaking. If we're saying what everybody else is saying and, and doing what everyone else is doing and going wherever else is going, the question is, do we really know him? Because our greatest impact on the world is when we're least like the world. When the world is going left, then we should be looking at, okay, let's just see if God's leading us another direction. We don't just tend to follow because they say and hearsay. You know they, right? They say. We tend to follow what they say. And we miss sometimes what God is saying because God is speaking at the same time, but are we listening? So Jesus was saying, I know what they're saying, but who do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? And then, you know, Peter says, you're the Son of the living God. And God says, and Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. You only know this because you know my Father. In other words, the real truth is not revealed to us through headlines. The real truth is revealed because of our relationship with the Father. Amen. If we really want to know the truth, if we really want to be free, the truth is what sets us free. Not the news, not the media, not the, 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 the popular opinion that sets us free. What is God saying during this time? Amen. What is his word? Because that's the word that we should be listening to. That's the word we should be listening for. That's the, the counsel that we should be following. And in 2020, I believe that God's been trying to speak to us and, and through us, but there's been so much noise and, and so much fear and trepidation and worry that we're, we're negating the wisdom that God is trying to share with us. Because I believe we'll look back at some point and we realize that there was a lot of things that we missed in 2020. So I'm going to try to regroup a little bit later here in a moment. Some of the things we may have missed in 2020 that were happening at the same time when all of this other things were happening, there were other things that we missed, the little subtleties that God was trying to show us and share with us. God provides in our darkest moments. That's another thing you have to know. God provides in our darkest moments, especially in our darkest moments. When it is at that point where you have nowhere to turn, know that God sees. He knows just where you are. He always has a provision for us. He says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I think it was King David who says, I've been young and now I am old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken by seed begging bread. God's got us. We've got to stop sometime and realize where we are who we are, and whose we are. Our peace comes from that relationship with him. Not the things that we hear. I've, I've been listening to, to all kind of news of the case. I don't listen much, but I, they don't have good news. They don't have anything that provides us comfort and peace. One saying one thing and someone else is saying another thing. There's a lot of uncertainty out there, a lot of doubt, a lot of suspicions. But the peace can only come when it's from the inside out, not from the outside in. Nothing outside of you can bring you peace. Whenever you allow the Spirit of God to come in you, to dwell truly in you, and you center yourself in Him, He says, I'll put you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. So our peace does not come when our mind is being focused on all the things out there. It's the internal peace that He wants to calm the storm inside of us that's raging. If you look at the ocean, and you see sometimes when there's a storm out there, and you know the waves are real sweeping really high, and it's turbulent. You may not know it, but just a, just a couple of meters below that surface is peaceful. The ones that dwell deeply in the ocean, they don't know there's a storm going on up there. The storm is going on for those who's terrified by storms. If you go deeper than your storm, you'll find the peace is in the depth. The peace is not living on the shadows and on the fringes of everything that's going on. If you're outside in a storm, it will terrify you because you're in a storm. You can go somewhere where there's peace and get inside somewhere, and the further you go, the more peaceful life is. We had a basement in one of the homes that we had and the kids, whenever the lights would go out or there would be a storm or something's happening, they would get onto the basement. And they just loved being in the basement. It would be dark in there. And to them, that was the most peaceful 
place. They just, they, I asked them, they still remember being in the basement. I mean, even though there's, there's stuff going on, even when the lights would come back on, they still, no, we just stay down here in the basement. It was just like there was something about the peace. I'm saying that enduring times draw nearer to him. He says, draw nearer to me and I will draw nearer to you. Go to that place during this time where you can find peace. We need a Bethany. We need a place where we can surrender to. When the whole world has lost its mind, we need to find a place of peace. Yeah, Amen. We need to find that sanctuary, that place where we can go and commune with him, and he gives us that peace. And then you walk out of there with a whole different mindset. Yes. I feel badly for those who don't find peace, who can't find that place of peace like that, because the world can't give you that peace. And the peace that the Lord gives you, the world can't give you. But here's another thing. The world can't take it away. Amen. The world can't take away your peace. Amen. I, Amen. The world can't take your peace away. In the midst of all of your storm, your trouble, and all this going on, you just have peace. You know what? You, you're looking at the same thing. You're living in the same world, but your world inside is that you're at peace. And that's what he says, I bring you. Jesus says, my peace I give to you. John 14, 27, he says, my peace I give to you. He says, not as the world... My peace. So we got, we got an option. We can try to go with the peace that the world provides, or we can have that perfect peace that only comes in communion and relationship yes. with him. Amen. I say we need to dwell in peace. There's, there's uh, two options that we have in peace. We live in peace, or we rest in peace. <laughs> oh. Let's live in peace. Yeah, amen. Uh, is that right? You agree with me? Let's live in peace. Yeah. You know? I don't want to be saying, oh, he looks so peaceful. No, I don't want to be like, no. I want my peace while I'm living, thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> How was he? Are you, I would think, oh, he looks so peaceful. No. Huh. I don't want to have my peace now. Oh, yeah. so he says, I give you perfect peace. Perfect peace. The passage, he says, all understanding. Understand. That's another thing about that peace. He said, the peace that passes all understanding, which means there's no reason why you should have peace. There's no reason why you should be you should be at peace and, and okay with everything, but you have peace. I told you before, I have seen homeless guys, I watch guys who are homeless, people who are homeless, and I always have a moment for them. If I, you know, if they're sitting around, I go and take moments, general and chat with them. I find out they have more peace sometimes than people that I know. Sitting there, they have nothing. One guy was pushing his cart, he was singing, just having a good time. I'm like, man, what is he? I want to go. I want what he's got. You know, whatever he's got, he doesn't have the worry and the issues and the trepidation of the world. He may not have all the other things that we think that we should have, but sometimes it's a peace that you've got to give you in the midst. I'm saying in the middle of a circumstance, you can have peace. You can have peace. A diagnosis, but you got peace. Maybe going through financial problems, but you got peace. Maybe you have loved ones that have passed on or you've gone through issues in life, but he'll bring you peace. My mother went home to be with the Lord. You know, when she was struggling for a while and we watched her decline. And when my brother called me that morning, he said, Mom went home to be with the Lord this morning. And for a split second, I started to kind of get into this, oh, you know, the loss, the grief, and other, and then peace came. Peace. And I started thinking, yeah, she's with Jesus. Mm. And my peace came from dwelling on that which is above, which is not about me, knowing that she's with him. No more suffering, no more pain. We're not dealing with that anymore. She's in a place that we all hope to be at some point. So my peace came from having a different perspective than the world perspective. Yeah. Because the world perspective is like, oh, I just love. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm not negating. I'm not minimizing anything like that. You go through that. Everybody grieves differently. Yeah. But my peace, that peace brought me out of that. Mm -hmm. I had to have peace that she's in a good place. Mm -hmm. That I had this, I had all those years with her that God gave her to me. And I, and I had to be thankful and grateful for that. And celebrate her life. Sometimes people are never the same after a loss. They can never have peace again because of something that, some setback. Maybe it's a loss of a loved one. Maybe it's some issue, a divorce, 
uh, bankruptcy, losing all that money, I, whatever. Some people are never the same again because they can never have peace about it. This is what we have to ask God during those times to draw nearer to Him. That peace only comes in communion, true communion with Him. Remember, adversity will introduce you to somebody, yourself. Mm. <laughs> you get to know who you are during those times. Right? It'll, you get to know who you are. And it will strengthen true faith. You're going through a storm, it'll strengthen your faith. It'll strengthen true faith. But it will crush superficial faith. Those that had a, a shallow faith or a wavering faith, when something adverse comes along, if your faith is not truly strong, it will crush it. And sometimes people will walk away from the faith, they'll walk away from Jesus, they walk away from everybody else because they went through a situation. And they had an option of focusing on what is above rather than things that are beneath. Are you with me? Are you with me? Mm -hmm. All right, all right. So first, keep an eternal perspective. Next one, God has a plan. God has a plan. Know that. He has a plan. 2020, I've been hearing saying, oh, it's been the worst year, and, and this year is, you know, the ver to me, the final verdict is, it's not been determined yet, that to me. I don't, I'm not too quick to call something. Just based upon what you see. I'm not calling it yet. I'm not calling it. And I'm not minimizing the, the suffering, the loss of lives, the job losses. I'm not minimizing the pain that people have endured, the, uh, and the economy and all that. I'm not minimizing that. I, I just believe that there's something that we're meant to get from this. Right. There's something we're meant to gain from this, that we're meant to learn from this. And gain that perspective, allow that to take us into 2021. Better and not bitter. Because if you focus on the negatives, it will make you bitter. I promise you, if you focus on the negative, you'll become bitter and more pessimistic. If you can find how to focus on what is good, Philippians tells us, I'm sure, we're in Philippians chapter 4, verse number 8. It tells us exactly what we should be focused on. Finally, brethren, it said, listen, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. We have an option. We can meditate on the worst of things, or we can try to find the best of things. Light always shows us the way out. You always find your way by finding the light. If you're ever in a dark area and you want to get out, you're looking for light. Believe me, you're always going to look for light, because light tells you that there's something outside of this. Focus on the light. Navigate yourself on the light that God shall shows us. So here's some things I saw in 2021, I mean 2020, that we may have missed. Out of quarantine came bonus time with your family. You have a chance to spend a lot more time with family. Racial tensions and activism have brought about changes for the better in our, in our world because of issues that have happened during this time. Drive-in, drive-in theaters have made a comeback. Did you know that? Amen. 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 Drive-in. <laughs> huh? Before you know it, they'll be bringing back eight tracks and all kinds of stuff. We'll be, we'll be retro, you know, be coming back. Way back, way back. People around the country have brushed up on their song skills. People are making masks for other people. They're becoming more industrious. They're finding ways to, to make it happen, to make, to make ends meet. They're finding ways to be more creative, finding ways to hold things together. We rediscovered our love for hobbies like reading and cooking and gardening and a lot of things that we have lost and didn't have time for. We we're finding some real values in life that we may have missed in the business of things. We're finding that we can get away, we can get along with less. Amen. Amen. We find that we didn't need all that we had. Mm -hmm. We find that we can function with less. And sometimes we find out it's, it's, a, it's an easier burden. Mm -hmm. And if we can measure just our level of contentment, our level of, of actual peace, if we don't get, if we get away from the headlines, we find out that we have a, a, our disposition has changed a little bit. A different perspective has come about about a lot of things for the better. We're more aware of the suffering around the world. We're more sensitive to the issues of people around us. 
People are coming together. We're finding that they're more social now. They're help, as far as trying to help one another. We're finding out that we're in the same situation. So let's help one another through this thing. Another one, Crayola. Crayola has launched a box of crayons with diverse skin colors for children to accurately cover themselves in the world. Wow. Yeah. wow. Crayola, yeah. I remember when I had Crayola, I only had one brown. I had Crayola, <laughs> one brown. Mm -hmm. But now there's many browns, there's tans, and all this, just like this. Yeah, we're like this here behind us, this background. Amen. So Crayola, Crayola knows that, they kind of come up with that. So yeah, we learned that homeschooling is hard. <laughs> huh? And now we're really appreciating that the heroes are the teachers that the hard work that they do. They get a, they get a for the teachers, the yeah. teachers are heroes. We do we never appreciate them, and you never appreciate it until you really have to do their job. Like, this is tough. Teaching is hard work. The sales of bikes and helmets and accessories are uh, uh, brought people outdoors and we're starting to do more things that are active and starting to re relearn our environment and learn to appreciate the things around us more. As I said, there's a stillness. If you really would, can stop, there's a stillness out there that we haven't experienced in some time. A stillness that comes as a quietness that we don't understand and we can't explain. Sometimes the stillness worries people because things get too calm and, and we don't know where it's going. We want to know where it is. We want to know where we are and what's happening. And sometimes we've got to be content with just knowing that we're here. And, and the trust comes when we just be still and know that God is God. The struggle is when we may not trust God and we want to try to navigate it ourselves and we don't know which way to go but we keep wanting to go some direction and the danger is when you just start going your direction you you tend to go astray it said if you're lost you know when you're with you have a strand in the desert you got a vehicle what do you do you stay with your vehicle have right, you heard that right. you stay with your vehicle because they always find a vehicle they just right. don't find you right. whenever they find a person they say, here's a vehicle where are they they're, they're, they left they, they stray we got to stay sometime and know that God knows where we are. Don't stray away from Him. Because we tend to stray away from Him and, and our place is finding where we need to be and staying in that place. I mentioned that those that are not coming to church right now, this is the place. This is, don't stray away from there. Gradually people are straying away. They were coming. We had more views at first. People had engaged and watching worship service. And then they I see less people watching. Mm. Mm -hmm. Less people are engaged. They're gradually straying away. It's a shifting that happens. And it's so subtle that we're not aware that we're, we're shifting. We believe that we're there. We still, everything is the same, but no, no, we're gradually shifting away. Using the idea of the radio station, when you, when you get away from here, I went to Tucson this week. The radio station here was once, but when I got to Tucson, it was a different radio station. It was, K Love here, but as we got in Tucson, it was it was uh, public radio, mm -hmm. same frequency. Oh. But when I get around from Cacho Peak, you know, you're going through there, you're going there. Yeah. That's when you start fading out, you know, yeah. and something else starts coming in. You're gonna get on the other side of Cacho Peak, you know. Yeah. Same frequency, different different format. And the same is happening when we're when we're in our relationship with Jesus. We believe because the frequency is the same that it's all good. You still do things the same way with the same frequency. I do the same, same amount. Sometimes when your heart gets away from him, the format changes because your heart changes. You're not attuned to him like you were before. Mm. So you got to make sure that as, you're, as we're dwelling and you're watching online, you're on the same frequency. You're still tuning in every time, the same frequencies. You know exactly where to tune in. But if the format is changing in your life, it's so subtle. A different format is happening. And you're thinking everything's the same because you have not changed the frequency. Satan is subtle. He attacks us here. And he'll make you believe as long as you're doing things the same way, and you're still doing it that way, everything is good. But your heart is gradually drifting away from him. Don't allow the format to change because you're selling for frequency. The Israelites wandered in the desert. The question is why. Why they wander? Didn't they have GPS? 
didn't have GPS. One thing about GPS, amazing, GPS always knows where you are most of the time. No, where you are. I'm, I've never been lost now that I have GPS. I wonder, how did I function with before GPS? How could I find my way home? I mean, even when I'm out, I just say, take me home. GPS would say, directions to home. And they'll just give you, turn here, turn right, turn left. Give you exact directions. GPS. Wouldn't it have been great if, if they had GPS in the wilderness? But they did. It was God's positioning system. God's positioning system. See, God knew exactly where they were. Even though they thought they were lost, God knew exactly where they were. And if they would trust him, he was navigating them exactly in the way they needed to go. But the issue happened was they didn't want to trust him. Because it didn't feel like the right thing. They didn't like the way that God was doing things. They didn't like the menu. But God was serving them. They wanted more. They remembered the way it was. They kept going back to comparing with God. Now that we were with God, it seemed like it was better when we were over there and we were slaves. They kept going and they kept rejecting God. And over and over they were doing this as God was trying to lead them to this place that he was promising them. See, with all the grumbling and complaining that was happening, they were going to take that into the promised land. See, if, if you have this inside of you, this grumbling and complaining, this doubt, this fear, this worry, no matter how much changes, that's still going to be what you're going to see. You're going to see issues. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So if you just, for you to see something that's beautiful, you got to have that inside of you. The most wonderful, the most beautiful thing that you can find you will not know what you're looking at. You will not be able to receive it if you don't have it on the inside of you. I don't have a big, huge appreciation for art because I, I, don't, I don't know the difference between one piece and another piece. And here's an interesting thing. One, one person was carrying a piece of art uh, flying to, to, I think, to England somewhere, and he lost it at the airport. That the art was worth $340,000, this piece was valued at. You know where they found it? In the trash. Oh they found it in the trash. Oh then someone saw this and said, what is this? I don't know. <laughs> and sometimes God's looking at us and saying, if you can't appreciate what I'm giving you, right. if you don't understand where you are and can't see what I'm giving you right now, then you're missing where I'm trying to take you. Stop and look at 2020 and appreciate what God is giving you. It's not all bad. Of course, there are things that we can, we can, you can always point to things, yes. You can show me headlines, you can, but I have to say that God is in it. The sun came up this morning. And every day that I could, that the Lord allows you to see another day, that's a, that's a day that you can rejoice about it. This is the day the Lord has made. This is the day we're to rejoice and be glad in. Not tomorrow, not when things are better, not when things are happening the way you want them to. Rejoice here. Not for the suffering, rejoice in the suffering. In all things, give thanks. In all things, give thanks. Not after, find something to be thankful for. Find something to be thankful for while we're in it. And lastly, lastly, God hasn't forgotten about us. Philippians 4.19, And my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The person who, who wanders, like the Israelites who are wandering, they're also a wandering. A wandering person is always a wandering person. They're wondering if this is the right place. Is this where I need to be? They're always a wandering. Whenever you're wandering, it's like your mind is not made up. Stop wondering. And you'll probably stop wandering. Ooh. Give God your best. I'm going to close this acronym BEST. B E S T. Give God your best. The first one to be is believe in faith. Believe in faith and build your hopes on things eternal. So the B, be, be, believe in faith. Believe. And build your hope on things eternal. Keep looking at what's, things you don't see. Rejoice about those. Know that God has a perspective and a way that's different than our way. Believe in that. E is encourage yourself. Encourage yourself. Don't look for things that boost you Boost yourself. Sometimes you've got to pick yourself up. 
as you're feeling yourself driving and sliding under this hole, you say, whoa, whoa, that's not me. Hey, get, 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 get out of your head. You know, you gotta, you got to shift things around. Encourage yourself. Expect and believe that God has a transition, has a revival that's going to happen in our world. I expect a revival to happen. I expect that more people are going to be coming to Christ and coming to know you. I mean, you and I as brothers and sisters, but to know him as Lord and Savior. I expect a whole new family. That's the E. Encourage yourself and expect a revival. S. Share your faith with others. Share your faith. The world needs some good news. It's not going to come from the networks. The good news that the world needs is going to come from you and I, the ones who are willing to share it, the ones who are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Share the good news. God says, I'll give you the words and wisdom. Don't worry about how you're going to say it and what you're going to say. Just be willing to be that vessel that God uses. And we'll change lives and ultimately we'll change the world. And T, trust God's plan. Trust his plan. But I don't know God's plan. It's all right. That's where faith comes into play. We trust that his plan for us is good and not evil. Plans to prosper us and not harm us. Plans to give us a hope and a future. Trust his plan. And I'm going to just finish with a scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 and verse number 9. Just receive this. Receive this. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, but the things which are seen are temporary. But the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. Eternal. Father, thank you for 2020. We thank you for the place that we are. We thank you that we can trust in you. That you brought us this far. Well, some didn't make it, God. We have... We have a list of things that we have concerns about. We have unanswered questions going into 2021, but we trust you with the answers. As we prepare our hearts, God, we prepare our hearts to receive you more, that we can draw nearer to you, that we can find that, that place in the basement that we can get to you, that we can commune and have that peace. We pray that we can take peace into 2021 that we can take a joy in 2021, that we can find comfort and unity, and that your will is done. For all this, God, we give you the glory. And for those who do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you never prayed the prayer of salvation, just say these words and repeat them. Believe them with all of your heart. Say, Father, forgive me. I repent of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ died for me, and I believe that God raised him from the dead. By this confession, I'm saved. I make Jesus Christ my Lord and my Savior. You may be a backslider. You may have already prayed that prayer. I prayed that prayer, Pastor, yes. But you may have lost your way. You may need to rededicate yourself back to him. Just ask him right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, just say, Forgive me. Thank you for never leaving me. Thank you for never letting go of me. I trust you. Take out this heart of stone and give me a heart of flesh. I make Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior.
Father, for those who prayed those.